Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attack Productions. Today I'm back up joined again by Fluff and Adam. What's up, people? Hey, everybody. In today's matchup as well, it's Fluff versus Adam. Adam has brought us Green Majin Buu, and Fluff has brought us, well, Majin Vegeta. So a little bit of aggro versus complete defense. Who will prevail? Let's find out. There's buttons, links. Check them out. Guys, get into it. Uh, my opening hand my opening hand there was four robotic reposts. <laughs> so you kept it. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> what are you looking for in your starting hand if you have the perfect? Uh, so we're looking for a Kabito Kai, looking for a Sermon Vegeta, and probably looking for a two-drop Goku or a ultimate duo Saiyan. Mm -hmm. um, and then usually an extra card that I can charge to help get future robotic reposts turned on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've got a really nice uh, metal leader there. Um, Dude, that, that metal leader is beautiful. I had it's never seen good. that one person, and it's got to be one of my favorite leaders. And even though I'm not huge on Boo, that's a beautiful leader. Absolutely. Do you have all the Boo metal leaders from TCG Metals? <laughs> the only one I don't have is the yellow one, which I think Trevor has. It's the one with him eating the big old cookie or the big old chocolate, uh, which I think I might have to look into getting. Yeah. So green, I mean, green boo, it's, like you said, it's it's more on the defensive side. I really have to try to get into my Z leader if I can, because then I can start eating cards off, not just the the, the drop zone, but also um, the uh, the board as well. Aggro, I mean, yellow aggro is really tough on this deck, and uh, you'll see that I do everything in my power to try to withstand just the sheer number of attacks that this, <laughs> this deck is able to put out. Yeah, I was expecting, um, being that this is the green boot deck, I was definitely expecting the green boot topo like card. Mm -hmm. um, I was expecting dormants. So I was definitely expect to be under floodgates most of this match. I remember back when Trevor was labbing this deck a lot, and he was playing this deck pretty heavy. This deck can get really mean if you let it get off the ground. So one of one of the things that it kind of crumbles under is early aggro, especially if there's no floodgate involved. That was yeah, a great think, life take by, for you, uh, Adam. By the way, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, and and what's what kind of stinks about this is um, just, and I guess really with playing any deck is not knowing and being familiar with what the opponent's deck is looking to do. I played against Yellow Majin Vegeta before. Um, so I was, you know, I knew that the, uh, that the servant card was an issue. I knew that the duo card was an issue. Um, but I don't, I don't know that I was expecting it to go as hard as fast. Yeah, I, um, I have been testing for Gen Con and Majin Vegeta is one of those decks. When I built it like a typical yellow deck, the deck felt really clunky and odd to me. And when I rehabbed the deck to be a more aggressive play style, the deck felt smoother. It, it's it's a little more glass cannony, but it's smoother. So definitely going that route has increased my overall experience with the deck. Well, and in in contrast, in you know with my deck, the. That four cost that I just uh, played, I'm able to search for unison. A lot of my cards have to have the ability to spirit boost. Um, so I do play the Vegito unison uh, as well as the uh, the Bobbity. Um, and I just, I could not get a unison out in time to start making Majin tokens, being able to get rid of those Majin tokens to keep my booze out in the field. Um, it was just, like I said, really hard, really fast. One of the things that I think that I, if, if I'm in your shoes in this matchup, knowing that Vegeta awakens typically turn two and goes down to five life, I wouldn't have swung with that four drop. It would have made yeah. me burn an extra card to tap it and then pop it as opposed to just being able to freely pop it by playing a card. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't have swung with that card until you got your units now and you're able to start utilizing Spirit Boost. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And here I'm able to just apply a lot of pressure with the Ultimate Duo coming down and then the Vegeta coming down. 
And then I think this is activate battle to play the Goku. Yeah. 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 And of course, and now I'm, I'm, oh, go uh, ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, I'm just going to tap the Goku to get a draw. I'm not going to worry about swinging with the Goku. I've already got you at four life, which is where you're going to start defending. And it's not going to be terribly difficult for you to defend a 15k. So I just want the draw off of it. And then at the beginning of the turn, it'll restand. It'll have blocker. It'll provide me with a little bit of a protection should I need it. Yeah. So now I'm on turn two. Yay. <laughs> I'm down to four life. Um, trying to see what I can do. Trying to get something started. Um, I, I really want to try to get down to, um, to my, like I said, to my Z leader. My Z leader is 20K. Um, I've got to have, I think it's two Z energy uh, and one green. Um, but we'll see how it goes. I do know that I've got um, quite a few cards in my hand. I have not seen that two cost green Majin Buu, um, the floodgate yet. I do run three of them in my in my deck, but I think that I was a little bit more anticipating uh, cards that have more energy than what your actual energy is. Which you know, utilizing some of those cards that, that get rid of those uh, types of battle cards, I was just having a tough time getting this deck off the ground. Yeah, it, and this this turn is pretty critical for you too. Um, because it's like, do you awaken? Do you play your unison? Do you pass tapped out? What do you do? Um, here, I'm not sure if I'm gonna, how aggressive I'm going to go on this turn. It really depends on if you put me under a floodgate. If there's a window for me to go hyperly aggressive, I'm going to take it. Yeah, and, and I think it might, my timidity, I think, really hurt me uh, in this particular turn because I do have a dormant in my hand. Um, I'm just looking for the right time to play it because I'm like, oh, okay, he's got one more. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for the late game, right? Um, right. That was, that was a really, really bad choice. <laughs> um, those of you that are playing against Yellow Majin Vegeta and has the ability to attack a billion times in a turn, so be careful. Yeah, everything plays for one energy. So you're really limited by essentially the limit one on the cards. Can you play multiple of the Vegeta's per turn? No. Can you play multiple of the ultimate duos per turn? No. So it really bases itself around what is left over from the turn prior plus the limit ones on the cards that you're going to play. And where those Vegeta's have Servant, I'm relying on the Zarbons to restand them defensively. Here, I want to press. I wasn't pressuring for you to take damage. I actually wanted you to defend and get some of that hand down. Yeah, um, and unfortunately, I've I've played that as well, um, and I knew uh, it's just one, or it's it's two, or whatever. I'll I'll go ahead and take it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can see not only did you have a Dormant, but you also had a um, Homicide of Clones. But I can't remember, does Vegeta pop on Swing or just on play? Is it pop in general? But Vegeta pops on the, the Majin Vegeta pops a rest mode five or less on Swing. That's a good hit. Holy crap. That's good EDK, yeah. <laughs> EDK hitting the secret rare sucks. Because I'm planning was... on going into the EDK on my fourth turn. Yeah. Yeah, it's I I really, really thought that my look luck was gonna start turning around after after I hit that, but uh yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so now I don't have the secret rare plan to fall back on, so I'm digging for cards and digging for possible solutions here. I'm trying to avoid activating the rest on the Goku until Adam plays a blocker token, if he's got one, so I can just tap the token down and bypass the blocker. Um, but my hand quality is not exactly where I want it to be, so I do go on ahead and pop it. And then there's the blocker token. 
I thought it was gonna be enough. <laughs> Yeah, Yellow's ability to ref stuff. I mean, it's as I've said before on you know on the channel, um, resting cards is much more effective in I think the current kind of uh, card game than it was when it first started becoming prevalent on the yellow cards. Absolutely, um, wiping skills as well. Um, you know, because you used to have to pay for for a card that. At four energy, <laughs> you know, um, but there's so many skills nowadays. Yellow is really becoming um, more of a control uh, color than even blue. And then here, just showing how wide this deck can go so fast. I think Adam's sitting at four card, four or five cards in hand. Um, I had a very super combo heavy hand. You saw on that one swing, I comboed a Fasha plus two super combos. Here I had my third super combo and I just dump hand here just to see. And Adam, you know, scoops it up because he knows his hand was Almost put the table, but uh, but you and I had a friendly <laughs> match afterwards, uh, which made me feel a lot better, so. Yeah, yeah. The friendly was, was a lot more other-sided than this was. <laughs> Where you almost flipped the table. Yeah. <laughs> so I felt good. <laughs> yeah. Payback's a bitch. That's and, right. And with that being said, thank you for tuning in. Keep in mind his buttons, links down below. Check them out. Bye.